Here we're going to start a drawing for Automation Studio. And we're going to launch it and then create this technical diagram. Depending on your startup, you may have seen a screen like this. And we want to pick Electrotechnical NEMA. We're going to do a couple things. We're simply going to choose Document, Properties, Project, Document, Properties. And we're going to hit this Page Setup, Open and Modify. And we're going to tell it we want to use Size A, as that's the size we print out. Then we'll close that. Now, we're going to pull out a few components, but first we have to go to the Electrotechnical NEMA collection. The things we're going to need is a power source. Then we're going to need a disconnect and circuit breaker. We'll throw that out there. And then we're going to need, here we can give it a, a name, where we will just call it the disconnect breaker. Then we're going to pull out a contactor. So we're going to want this to be able to work with it. And we'll put that there. We'll name that a little bit later. Then we're going to pull out an overload. And put that there. And here we're just going to call it OL for overload. And then we're going to drag out the motor and line those all up. Now I'm going to say right click, zoom all components. And we're going to learn about these different wire choices up here. Command wire will be what we wire the circuit with. But when we're doing power, such as here, we could use L1, L2, 3, neutral, ground, or here we have a polyphase, which is a really nice tool. These all look to be in the same line, so I got good luck there. We're going to click there, and you see we just click and release. So we click, drag our, uh, just pull our mouse. We're not holding the mouse button down. And we go here and we click, click, release click release and there we've wired that up we're going to need a couple other things on this line we're going to need a ground for the motor so that one we're going to use a command wire for that could certainly be appropriate or a regular wire the simulator doesn't really distinguish so now that we've got that done that's going to be the power circuit so we're going to use something that we normally might not think of but we're just going to get a text box and we're just going to say that this and we'll draw a box okay power circuit okay we will leave this part there kind of wiggle it and i got in and we're just going to pick uh, the green color transformer so I'm going to pull back up the library depending whether you've pinned it or not auto hide see it hides automatically or does it stay out but here I'm going to go get a transformer all these will come out of this home library and I'm going to put that about here so we'll just draw that there and now I'm going to use a L1 wire to connect up H1 to L1 and I'm going to connect to the disconnect and then I'm going to go get an L2 wire and connect there and I'm going to tell it to go to the breaker now that's wired in now the others we're going to use a command wire I'll just switch that now but the next components we need we're going to need a normally close button and we're just going to uh, 
put that where we think is maybe a good area. We'll just say down here, a little bit of space. And this one just gets labeled stop. And we do the green check mark. Then we're going to leave it a little space and we're going to get a normally open push button. And we're going to put it kind of like right there. This one gets labeled start underscore push button. And we show it here. Um, we're going to pull out a break contact. And we're going to label, put it right here. And we don't have anything to associate it with. So we're going to come back to that later. And then we're going to go get a coil and put the coil right under here. And that'll be what we're going to call R1. It's synonymous to use relay, contactor, all depends on the designer. And then we're going to make a, another break contact, which we're going to, again, we're going to link that right to the overload. So we double click there, it makes a link, and it's linked it. So it's driven by this overload. Well, now that that's good, we can go and connect our circuit. So I've got the command wire. I'm going to connect at the transformer. Go over, click, go down, click, click, and so forth. Just making connections. Click, release, click, release, click, release, click, click, go out a little bit, go up, go over, and click. Now that I've done that, I'm going to do one more connection. As long as we're at the transformer, we're going to take the transformer and make two different grounds. This one, I'm going to actually do by sliding up and holding down shift and releasing the mouse button, and it connects it automatically. To get rid of this wiring connection, I'm going to just hit escape on my keyboard. Then I'm going to go get another ground wire. That's going to be used for our ground connection to ground the transformer, its core. So in case the windings should melt due to overcurrent draw, they will be able to uh, make a short to ground and trip the fuses or overloads. So that works well there. We're looking good. We're now going to go to add our second rung, where we see have, have a contact that we need a uh, make contact. Now we're going to place it kind of underneath with a little bit of space. So I'm going to go down to that line. It's just an easy place for us to see. And we're going to connect that to the R1. Again, double click, makes the connection, and we're there. Then we have a normally open stop button. So I'm going to go get that, and I'm going to put that kind of right underneath the other one, except this one is going to be called stop. PB. And now we're going to go and get another coil. And we're going to put that underneath the coils. Always line up. So there we go. I think that looks pretty good. And we're going to label this R2, the second relay. Now we're going to connect this circuit. So we default to the command wire. We go up. We double click. And we tell it to connect to the transformer. We then connect here, 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 and so forth. And again, we connect that up. So we're good to go there, but we've got a couple undeclared contacts. So we're going to go into this one, double click that, and we're going to associate it with R2. Again, double click makes the association. And that's how it knows. That's why we left that blank to begin with. The next rung is going to use a lamp. So we're going to drag that out. We uh, can use the same spacing, or we can go a little bit shorter. And this one is pretty straightforward, except we're going to do a couple things. We're going to go into it, and it comes up with data. And one of the things we want to do is look at the um, name of the device. So the component is called lamp, but we're going to call that power on. 
And for power on, we're going to change the light to be a green light. So we'll just pick a nice, nice green there. And that'll be good there. Now this we want to have on whenever this breaker is energized. So the wiring is straightforward. We simply go here, click, double click. We can go there, that's fine. Click, go up here, double click. So that covers the power on. Now we're going to want to add the next part, which is a make contact from R1. So again, we're going to kind of eyeball it, put it in there, lined up. It says, well, who do I belong to? R1 will be controlling it. We double click, and there it's assigned. Now that's going to drive another light. And we're going to line up that and there. And this light, we're going to double click. And we're going to make it a system running. So we want to make the name, instead of lamp, we're just going to call system running. And for that, we're going to indicate that with also a green indicator. And that means the system's running. Now we wire that. And like that. Now we can move these labels in front of the lights, if we so wish. Now we're going to add another rung, but this is going to be with an R1 normally close. Again, we're going to line that up. And that's going to be tied to R1. After you double click and make the link, you can just Close that up. Another light. This one we're going to go into the name. We're going to change the name to be sys stopped. And that one we're going to use red. Those are standard NFPA, standard industry colors. So we don't get to be totally creative. We have to stick in the rules of what industry expects. Here we go. We go up there, 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 and there. Now at that point, I'll just right click and say zoom all components. And we see we have an overload here, but we, uh, we have that identified, but we don't have this identified. So we're going to go into this set of contacts, variable assignment, and say this is also driven by R1. It makes the link. And now that is linked to there. So at this point, it should be good, but we're going to do a couple tweaks. Um, one, on the motor, I want to move this text over here, just to get it out of the way. And I want to go into the motor. Again, double click it or go Component Properties. And in data, one of the things we want to show is, well, what is the current of this motor? And we see all sorts of settings. And we see that this motor has a rated current. Well, we're going to tell it that this is actually a 10 amp motor. And we'll close that. And we'd like that 10 amps to be displayed. If we wanted to display the frequency, we could do that. If we wanted to display the, uh, the voltage, etc., we could do that. Now we look up here. Here's the 60 hertz. And here's the 10 amps. Yep. Click and drag. Now we're going to do the same thing with the overload. It would be nice to see exactly what is the overload set to. So that's one factor. And to display whatever its current is. So we're going to look in variable assignment, or is it builder? So here we see that it is set for 16 amps. 
Well, we're going to set it for 12, which is about 125%, pretty typical. And uh, we're going to show that. Now, they also have a, another thing called a timer that will tell you how soon it's going to trip. But we'll ignore that part. Okay, well, see, we can do that. So now we click that. I will not ignore it. But I want to move that so we can say the overload is 12 amp. We can put this little timer here. And I'm going to draw a little rectangle. Eh, about so. Nope. I'm just going to grab this, slide it down so we know that's it. And then now we know that about the overload. So that completes the drawing. And before we go further, just because it's a good idea, we're going to save this project. And we come up, you know, where we go, uh, you know, motor drawing. Whatever you like to draw, save it at is, is fine. Now, if everything's going good, we should be able to simulate. We see it's green here. We have to activate the disconnect. That's brought power here. We have power here. We're going to zoom to all components. We see the system stoplight is on, where previously it was not. Now we re-engage it. We start the system. R1 came on for a moment, but didn't keep running. We do see, you know, some ratings there and some things going, the motor is going. So we forgot something. So we're just going to add a seal in. So there we're going to add our normally open thing. We're going to assign that to R1, our make contact. And now we're just going to attach a wire and go up. A wire, go up. And now we can go simulate. We hit uh, power. We have the system is stopped. We start it. We see system is running. The contact has gone there. And then we can stop it. And we see it stops. If it's looking a little different, one of the things we have is hyperlinks. We also have uh, kind of some hyperlinks that links it, uh, mechanical ports. No, I think that's, never mind. So there you go. That's what you have to draw and get working so that you can do that. Now, one of the things I want to just show is what can we do with this? We can go into the simulation. We can pull out our clamp meter. We can put that on AC, move that up to one of the poles. We can also pull out a meter, and we can see, well, we can put that to our transformer, see how it highlights. Then we're going to see here, if we get any voltage, 119. Now we can go here, and always ignore millivolts. And remember, you can't measure past this side if you're referenced here. You'd have to move the black. But we're going to leave it there. We're going to power up our system. We now see the relay is getting 120. We're pulling our four amps. The motor must not be loaded. Here, if we ever wanted to check a relay contact, this is the best way. We see it's passing the voltage through. When we activate it, now we get to see it. And if we were to load this motor, we can pull quite a current and we see it's five seconds, four seconds till it pops. And then when that pops, this changes color. And the only way to fix it is it helps to remove that. And then you have to take it out of simulation and go back in. So if you do that and go back in, now you can start it up. And again, you could hook up the equipment. Very, very neat. We can see our RPM. We can see the rating of the motor. We can measure the current here.